What's good, everybody? Welcome to Zephyr 616, a Marvel podcast. I am your host, Carl Andres C.A., and I am joined by two special guest co-hosts who happen to be my friends as well. We have Abel Madro. What's good, everyone? Yeah, and Nigel Tapay. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, sure. Thank you, guys. So, before I ask you, Abe and Nigel, a few questions, and before the listeners get to know more about us, I will first talk about the whole concept of this podcast. So, Zephyr 616 is a podcast named after one of the most famous Marvel aircrafts designed by Leo Fitz in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which is the Zephyr, and also the main Earth of Marvel, which is 616. So basically, in this podcast, we talk about everything Marvel, and we break down the latest episodes of WandaVision, and then every upcoming Disney Plus series, announcements, rumors, and we also theorize and do Marvel-related stuff. So yeah, um, short backstory though. Uh, I had a plan of actually launching my own podcast last year, but the concept was entirely different. It was something like about life. I already had a title for it, and then I decided not to push through with it. Then I also had a plan of doing a live stream, similar to Elizabeth Hensridge's Live with Lil for One Division, wherein you talk in real time as you watch along. And then I told myself that it won't work. But now, look at what I am working on. If it weren't for my guest co-host today, I wouldn't be doing Zephyr 616. This is honestly a passion project for me. And I look forward to more episodes here. So yeah, enough of that though. We'll get to know more about each other pa. Look, I know you guys are my friends, Abe and Nigel. But for the sake of the listeners, to know you more... Let's have a short getting to know you activity. Are you guys G? Sure, no problem. Sure, sure. Okay. So here's the format. You'll state your name, your age, and if you're comfortable with sharing your school, your year, and your course, just tell it, okay? And answer the question, who among the Marvel Cinematic Universe characters do you hate? Okay? And also for the characters, you can like hate more than one character naman. So... Yeah, I'll start. So, I'm Carl Andres. You can call me CA. You can call me Carl. Either way. I am currently 18 years old and I'll be turning 19 this July. I am a freshman student at Mapua University and I am studying BS Technical Communication. The Marvel Universe character that I hate Well, I hate more than one. So I hate Clint Barton. And then I also hate Grant Sorry. Bard. Clint Barton, Hawkeye. I hate Hawkeye. I don't know. Uh, but... You're like the only person that doesn't have powers and you're still going to hate on him. Yeah, I That's hate very him. harsh. I'm so sorry, but I hate him. Maybe it has... Well, we all have our reasons. Yeah, it has something to do with Jeremy Renner. I don't know. Basta. And then I also hate Grant Ward. So, shampre, you haven't seen the TV shows. I hate Grant Ward, but I won't spoil it now. But to the listeners here, if you have watched Agents of Shield, you will understand why I hate Grant Ward. I'm sorry for the noises because I'm outdoors, by the way. So yeah. Also, the third character that I hate is Nathaniel Malik. You'll also understand why I hate him if you have watched the final season of Agents Okay? So yeah, moving on, I'll ask Abe to introduce himself. Come on, Abe. All right, what's good, everyone? I am Abe Almadro from the Ateneo de Manila University. I am a freshman student of the BS Management course. So for that question, who I hate the most in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, honestly, I had a hard time thinking about it. So first of all is... Uh, Red Skull. I know that villains are usually hated on, but I don't usually hate villains. I only hate the villains that didn't have that that much screen time or didn't have that much backstory in them. Considering that everyone's going to be watching the Marvel Cinematic Universe anew, um, 
Red Skull didn't have that much uh, backstory. Same with Shocker. Um, another villain. Age of Ultron. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. we've seen what he has done. He made Wanda Maximoff. And though he had a big hand behind that movie, we didn't get to hear a whole lot about him too much in that movie as well. Yeah. So a lot of MCU watchers are kind of left in the dark. So that's those are the two characters in the MCU that I hate the most since we didn't get to see much of them okay. in the MCU. Actually, before I ask Nigel, I just want to tell you, Abe, and ask you, would you be surprised if I told you that Strucker had a son? Of course I would be surprised since okay. I usually much watch uh, the MCU movies and I don't really read that much of the comics since there's over a thousand yeah, yeah. maybe chapters as well. So, yeah, of course I would be surprised if I found out that he had a son. Mm. And if that son would have a large role in the MCU sooner or later. Yeah. Actually, a Strucker, the background of the character was heavily discussed in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And also the son had a huge part in the plot of Season 5. So, yeah. If you really watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., like you'll understand the main plot of the actual MCU. That's With that said, I guess I should start watching. You should start watching. Agents of Shield. I really should start watching Agents of Shield. Yeah. Now moving on, Nigel. Same question. Hi, um, I'm Nigel James Tapay from uh, University of the Philippines, uh, Diliman. Um, I'm taking business econ right now, and I'm currently a freshman. <laughs> As for hating a Marvel character, I don't. I don't. I think. It's 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 hard to say that you, know, you hate a specific character. I, I guess you can hate, you know, uh, the actor or the actress. But for me, it's it's hard for me to hate on characters that have been, you know, uh, that I've grown with for uh, a few years already. So it's it's difficult for me. So I'll say I'm just disappointed in. Um, Mads Mikkelsen's character in Doctor Strange. Uh, I forgot his name. Uh, uh I, I forgot to wait lang. Uh, Kai... No wonder you hated Kai... him that much. Kaius, right? Kaius. Ka- yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, Kaius. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The one with um, the I think he just. I think they kind of wasted Mads Mikkelsen's talent. I guess. I mean, True. he's he's uh, he's a good actor. Like if you've watched his other films. And He's I an just amazing like, antagonist as well. Yes, yes. I just feel like his overall character wasn't really fleshed out that much. Like, it, I did, I didn't find the villain very interesting to me. Yeah. Um, I feel like it was a wasted opportunity of his talent. Yeah. Also, kind of like um, Ant Man. I feel like they're all overall really, really good films, but. Yung, like the, the villains in particular weren't as well written as the hero as the heroes so that's that's you know that's yeah, true. the one disappointment I found in, in both Ant-Man and Doctor Strange actually I know I actually agree with you Nigel because sometimes it really depends with the writer on how the this yeah unfortunately arcs unfold yeah and also sometimes the casting Sometimes they, you know, what do you call this? They have overqualified or maybe underqualified. Yeah, correct. Yeah. That's why I like, I know, then, um, Thor Ragnarok. I feel like... Yeah, uh, Ragnarok. It's so cool. I feel like yung, the overall lore between, like, uh, I know Grandmaster isn't really like, the main villain, but he's, he's so interesting. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeff Goldblum was really, really... Yeah, his character was... Used well despite not yeah. showing completely in the entire like movie. Like he's not the main villain, but yeah, he kind he's of like a side character, but he kind of he feels back, the back. like Correct. yeah. For me, a grandmaster is like just as interesting as everybody else. True. Unfortunately, um, with the case of Caesarius, the unfortunate thing that happened with him is that maybe he was completely overshadowed by the fact that Dormammu would also be in that movie. So, everyone would also expecting 
that's what we need with um our Marvel villains. They need more background. Or like build up. And, right? But I feel like yeah, uh, they need to get uh, built up much more. I yeah. feel like with the series they're they're gonna have an easier time making yeah. the villains. Because it's more, more complex yep. in the format. Actually, I was supposed to talk about like one of the villains in Agents of Shield, but I can't talk about it then because you haven't watched it yet, guys. So I won't spoil it for you. I'll be sure to catch up on Agents of Shield. You should. I'll, I'll try. You guys should, or like at least watch the recaps, so that you have like some sort of background for the characters already. So that's it for the getting to know you activity. We'll move on to the e- news and announcements. I am literally shaking right now. First up, we have the rights of both Jessica Jones and Punisher. They have finally reverted back to Marvel Studios. This basically means that Marvel Studios can do anything with these characters. They have the option to put them in future films and upcoming Disney Plus series. So, since you haven't watched the TV side of things, Nigel and Abe, which of the Netflix characters are you most excited to see in the future? Let's start off with Nigel, naman. Like, are you aware of these characters, like by name or something? Um, I've heard you mention them, na, yeah. but like I don't really know them. As a first timer, who are you like most excited to see in the future? Um, you mentioned Ghost Rider, like last week when you were watching uh, *One Division*. <laughs> Nigel, Ghost Rider isn't part of the Netflix. Oh, what? Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's part of Agents of Shield, but he's not part of the Netflix side of things. But see, okay. this I don't know anything about okay. the Netflix show. It's a good choice. Ghost Rider is a good choice. He's a very complex character, and he actually deserves to have his own show. So it's okay, it's okay. But okay, maybe a close second. What? And I'm sure this is Netflix. Uh, Daredevil. Yeah, Daredevil. Yeah, sure. I yeah, mean, Daredevil. I heard from the comics that he has a really him and uh he and Spider Man are like very. Close. Uh, we have like a lot of arcs right in comics, yeah. so I think that's gonna be really interesting and it's gonna translate well, in, in a movie if he ever you know, makes a cameo in the future. True. I agree with you too. How about you, Abe? Netflix characters. Yep. Um, I guess I should back Nigel up with looking forward to Daredevil. Yeah. Since I've watched some episodes along with family members, um, I'm also looking forward to Iron Fist. Am I right? Yeah, Iron Fist. Yeah, Iron Fist. I'm also looking forward to him in uh, the MCU if ever he will be included in the MCU. Hopefully, sooner or later, he is. Yeah. He will be. For me, I think, same answer with you guys, Daredevil. Because he's really, he really did an outstanding performance. Charlie Cox, the actor. And I love the storylines in the series. I also want to see him interact with Spider-Man and Deadpool. Because you know Team Red. I'm down for a Team Red spin-off. Like, may it be a movie or a series. I'm really down for it. So, moving on, we have Secret Invasion news. Let's go, you guys. So, according to Popcorn Planet, Chloe Bennett and Clark Gregg are rumored to reprise their roles in the upcoming Secret Invasion series on Disney+. Plus. So, take note that this has been rumored for such a long time already. It started with Daniel RPK, who happens to be a reputable scooper on Twitter. And also, in case you're wondering, the ending of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. kind of set up Agents of S.W.O.R.D., which is heavily involved in WandaVision. They are key players in the comics. Also, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is at number two in the top five MCU titles. It makes sense for the characters to return and have spin-offs, or for an Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. revival on Disney+. Plus, According to the same source also, most of the Netflix characters are going to be included in Secret Invasion, especially Daredevil and other related characters. The idea is to use several cheap characters, but with impact to the audience, making the event big, just like the comics. So the same people behind this rumor or scoop 
are the same people behind the rumors and scoops that have proven to be true. So thoughts on this, guys, the Secret Invasion news. Secret Invasion is the one with... Um, the scroll. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think in Captain Marvel, I think the, the scrolls have a lot of potential. So I think, um, you know, uh, expanding that into another storyline would be, would be great. Yeah, technically. Actually, fun fact though, my first Marvel comics was actually Secret Invasion. And it actually came free with this like toy. I forgot the toy though. Pero I got it when I was a kid. I was so happy when Kevin Feige announced that it's going to be a Disney Plus series. Because for me, as a fan, it's like full... You're series. already looking forward to it. Yeah, and I'm aware of the comics. So I'm really excited to see how it will be translated from pages to the series. It's a big... It's like a major plot point, right? So yeah, it's like it, it's, an Avengers level plot. How are they going to make that like it's a Disney Plus series? I think it's going it's a to series? Yeah, it's a series. It's not a movie. Oh. I think it's going to work because it's a complex story and who is in it but So far we have Nick Fury and then Talos. I'm seeing the characters ah, to avoid confusion. <laughs> Talos, also Monica Rambo, Captain Marvel, Daisy Johnson. Uh we have Phil Coulson. I'm looking forward to see Kate Bishop there too. Oh, also Daredevil pala. Honestly, I'm just looking forward to how they're going Deadpool. to Hopefully. write the characters into the screen. I am I expecting well-written, well-written characters, be it villains or the protagonists of exactly. the show. I'm just hoping it's not like a slow burn. Ah, yeah. Because I really... I, 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 I kind of want it to be story-heavy. Yeah. Really? Speaking of slow burn though, for one division, how do you think should people watch it? Like binge watching or weekly episodes? I think binge watching is is fine if you have a lot of patience. The best way to enjoy it is, is to um, kind of wait for everything and then just finish it that way. But um, you know, uh, watching it one at a time, you kind of really you have more time to get invested in the characters. Yeah. So it really depends on how you want to do it. Moving on to Abe. Oh, yeah. So in regards to binge watching or for waiting for it, waiting for every episode every week, yeah. um, uh, reminder for everyone that we waited, we all waited for a year for Endgame. So True. I guess for me, one week, isn't that much long of a wait for one episode of a series, which we know that is um, already well-written as it is and doesn't have that much amount of episodes. Watching a lot of anime. Of course, I love binge-watching since you get a a whole lot of the story in one sitting, but waiting for every episode, watching the episodes every week, isn't all that bad as well. Maybe it's... Can I just yeah. say that yes, I um, you know, making theories like guessing what's gonna happen next, it's it's half the fun. Of yeah, it's yeah. Of watching it. So, so yeah, yeah, that's that's the point. It's basically up to the people how they want it. Would they want to wait every week or just binge watch it? Some people has a lot of time to binge watch series, or some people just wants to get up to date with the series or anything Marvel related. Well, for me, I want it like to be released on a weekly basis because I did watch most of the Marvel shows on a weekly basis and it was fun having weekly conversations and theorizing. Also, well, I also did experience binge-watching Marvel shows like, for example, the Netflix ones and the Runaways series because I had to watch everything in one sitting. So, Well, for me, it's really up to the people too. But in terms of marketing and, you know, like business-related stuff, I think Disney really wants to, you know, extend the subscriber count. Increase the amount of subscribers. Yeah. And I hear it's like this to, you know, prevent piracy, you know, because if you release everything all at once, 
and yeah. you know uh, people pirate it True. you know it's 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 it's, it's, it's a risky thing it's really hard to oh, compared well, to releasing one episode per week and just uh, you know maintaining you know, that that uh, that subscriber count yeah they have to maintain it especially now that they're releasing Disney Plus Star so yeah Lastly, for the news though, so according to WandaVision actress Tiana Paris, WandaVision won't have a happy ending. Her statement goes epic and incredibly sad. So yeah, for me, what it's Marvel, what else is new? Like what I've said, I've seen most of the Marvel TV shows and most of the endings are really fulfilling and at the same time makes you emotional. For example, in Agents of Shield, it was kind of fulfilling, and I cried several times when I watched it. For Runaways, I did the same thing too. For Daredevil, did I cry? I did not cry. So yeah, thoughts on this guy? Maybe maybe that's the beauty of it of not having a happy ending all the time. Yeah. Since despite not having a happy ending, people are still people are left wanting more. They want to know more of what happened. How can they resolve this new issue that they have right now? This new problem that they have right now. And we, of course, we all hope that it ends on a good note. But ending on a on a bad note, ending on uh, a sad episode, um, isn't all that bad. Since yes, you're right. Uh, Disney wants to keep their subscriber count, maybe. Um, but. It's also for the good of the story and for the complexity of the characters as well. Or what happens is that it can affect the characters, right? Impact of the sad ending can have a drastic change on the characters. So, for example, if we see them again in another project, for example, we have, let's say, Monica. So what happened to her in WandaVision, we'll see the ramifications of it in Captain Marvel 2. Like that, right? And I think that um, you know uh, a sad ending isn't really a bad thing because um, I feel like uh, the concept of tragedy, I guess, or loss or something like that, like how one division is acknowledging it. I feel like it really brings more depth to the character, and I think um, acknowledging that and maintaining it up until the end, it really helps the story. I feel like in in uh, Iron Man 3, for example. I feel like uh, I really, really like uh, the concept of Iron Man with his PTSD. Yeah. But it I felt like emotion. it needed to be, you know, it, I felt like it shouldn't have been a happy ending, I guess, in a way, for Iron Man. I feel like, you know, uh, because PTSD isn't something you just um, recover from, it would have been more interesting if it was something he struggled with even up until you know the, the next few movies actually that's a good point too and i just want to say that sad endings make the marvel cinematic universe more grounded and more human it's very it's making the whole universe realistic right like for example for everyone who only watches the movies um infinity war yeah for example it didn't have a happy ending it didn't have a good ending so yeah, everyone was at the edge of their seats when Thanos was about to do his snap, and he did, and yeah. wiped out and, half of the universe. Uh, Spider Man, like when, when when he died, yeah, um, yeah, quote unquote, like you, you you felt something, like yeah, and, you know you know he was coming back as a you know your Spider Man too. Unfortunately, yeah. in End Game, that they kind of failed to hide that part though. You know, uh, even if we knew he was coming back, we, we, we still felt yeah. something. And you we still feel it, shocked. Yeah, and we saw how it affected the core six members of the Avengers and even Ant-Man and Nebula and Rocket, right? So, yeah, it's a great thing that they also do sad endings. But it's Marvel. What else is new, to be honest? So, yeah. Marvel's, you know, doing something new. Like, they're experimenting. That's great. We'll have a short break. We'll be right back with One Division Episode 7 Breakdown.
Welcome back to Zephyr 616. If you haven't watched episode 7 of One Division, you may pause this podcast and go back as soon as you are finished watching the episode. I'll give you three seconds. Three, two, one. So if you're staying with us, major spoilers ahead. Okay guys, so we can finally talk about One Division episode 7, Breaking the Fourth Wall. What are your thoughts on this episode? Let's start off with Abe. My goodness. That's that basically sums up what I think about this episode. Well, compared to the recent to the previous episodes which are quite long, um this one isn't as long as I guess everyone expected it to be at least probably an hour long. One hour. <laughs> This, despite, Some people heard despite from being, their friends said it was going to be one hour long. Yeah. Yeah, I know, right? So, despite being around, what, 30 minutes long only, this episode is heavy with the amount of revelations. Well, for some people, they already know some parts of it. But since we are strictly following the MCU, let us assume that not everyone has read the comics. Yeah. We kind of altered the story somehow, you know? Like So we can't really expect too much from yeah. the series or even the movies itself. So you guys can talk about spoilers, by the way, in this segment. Do you have anything else to say, Abe? It's going to be a lot to take in, especially for those who are going to watch it for the first time and who's basically um walking in the dark, yeah. especially regarding the series and the movies. Especially if you... You have no idea about the comics at all. It's gonna be pretty heavy with the revelations with um, Photon and Agatha Harkness. Yes. I'm just, I still can't process those stuff. Moving on to Nigel, before I talk, go, go ahead. So um, before I watched this, actually, um, I couldn't help it. So I, I went on Reddit and then I was like, I'm just gonna look at maybe one or two spoilers. The yeah. people of Reddit. Reddit, can <laughs> Reddit. Yeah. It's not basic, I swear. Um, I checked maybe one or two spoilers, and then one of it was like it showed the, like the, a screenshot of uh, Agnes. Oh. Then the caption was like, "I, I killed uh, what's the name of the dog?" Sparky. Sparky. Sparky the dog. Yeah. So after that, you know, I just decided, you know, what, that's enough spoilers for today. <laughs> <laughs> but um. I saw on the, the spoiler I saw before that was uh, something about um, uh, Monica getting her power. Yeah. So I was expecting, you know, uh, that. But the way uh, Marvel did it was was it was you know it was, it was good. Uh, I like the effect on their eyes. Uh, the, 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 like the, the, eyes. Her vision, like the, ah, way, yeah. the way she saw like. There's so much yeah. play regarding the eyes of people. Yeah. yeah. And I like that at the end, they kind of went in a, a horror thriller. Kind of Into a way. different perspective as well. Direction. Like just... when, when Agnes said um, they're, the twins are in the basement or something like that, yeah. uh, I already kind of felt like something bad was going to happen. But when she went down and there's like this... this Three, three roots everywhere. Yeah. And it was like dimly lit. And then they're like, mm, oh, what do you call that? Uh, the, the old castle ruin type of thing. Uh, the thing you typically see in like. Ruins in, and moss everywhere. Yung, uh, yung parang. Dungeon, yeah. Or, yeah, the dungeon. Yung, uh, the thing with the sacrificial. Thing. So, oh lord! Actually, yeah. that's not giving. That, it was giving those vibes, and I was I was just expecting for the, what the thirty seconds of that on screen. I was expecting a jump scare. I was already preparing. I don't like jump scares. So, um, the ending, like the, the the revelation that Agnes was you know pulling the strings, was really well done. And even though we expected that, like I, I felt like Agnes was very sus right from the start but you know just having it be confirmed finally in the show it's it's really nice and i feel like marvel really knows how their fans think for me actually i just want to add that with that scene in the basement it gave me i don't know if you guys have watched charmed 
or Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. But it kind of gave me those vibes. Mm. Yeah. And also... And I also like the intro then, by the way. Um, oh yeah, I love the intro then. It was just it's Wanda, it's, Wanda, it's, Wanda. It's everywhere. It yeah. The Office vibes. And I really yeah, I know, them. right? It's like a sitcom really vibe. Sitcom. Yeah. Actually, Nigel, Nigel, Nigel. It gave me High School Musical, the musical, the series vibes. With the talking to the camera thing. It's, right. I, I like the mockumentary. Yeah, the format. mockumentary. It works for The Office. Like, yeah. you, you know, you know the the John Krasinski look, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, just like staring at the camera. Yeah. Like, inside. It's a great thing to see on the Marvel. Yeah. I think this was like the funniest episode for me. Minus the ending. I mean, yeah, it's basically like a sitcom for the entire um episode. And then it switched up into a horror episode at the very end. Yeah, the last few seconds or minutes. And like, that's how. they add that, you know, a vision like hitting the, what, what do you call that? The, the cameraman thing or something? Boom I think they lower. I yeah, that. Like boom mic. Yeah, I like that. Like, they didn't have to do that. But it's, yeah. It's nice. nice touch. It's a small detail. Like, literally nice breaking touch. the fourth wall. Well, not yeah. literally breaking this fourth wall. They didn't the have fourth wall of that wall. Yeah. yeah. It's like it's like the cherry on top. True. And what I can say about the episode, though, like what Abe said, it's very short. And at the same time, it's very like filled with a lot of revelations. And it was surprising to me, even though I kind of knew it already that, you know, Agnes is Agatha Harkness. Like, since last year, people kept talking about it. Also, with the photon thing for Monica. I didn't... You know, with that, um, it just proves the point that it doesn't have to be long to be amazing. Yeah, true. 100% like, agree. With Mando. <laughs> yeah. Like, with, with Mando. Like, yeah, I, I, kept, uh, I think I told you this, like, last week. Like, if you ever did the podcast, I... I, I will talk about Mando, so you have to be prepared. Yeah, go, go, go for it. So, uh, I think that's 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 what's good about you know the Disney Plus uh, thing is that even if the screen time is you know a, a half hour, yeah. um, it's not, it's not you know they really maximize the screen time. True. Like and that's all I have to say. Disney Plus never fails to amaze the subscribers, right? With Mando. With High School Musical, the musical, the series, with One Division, and of course, I'm pretty sure with the upcoming. It's all the more movie. worth it to subscribe. Yeah, so you guys subscribe to Disney Plus. This is not a paid ad. <laughs> you guys should. It's not paid. It's not paid. Yeah, this is not paid. Just support not support the creators. <laughs> support the creators. Yeah, this is just a pilot episode, you guys. So chill. And I want to add also that Monica Rambo. Like, the build-up of her character was really great. Like, how it started and where... When did she appear? Episode 2, if I'm not mistaken. She how it started, started, how it's going. Yeah. <laughs> she started off as Geraldine in the sitcom reality. And then it was revealed in episode 3 that she actually got snapped or blip, right? Just in a span of three weeks in the MCU timeline, she got her powers. It was very seamless. Right? Can you agree with? Yeah, that? although people were expecting it, yeah, I love how they show it's how like, she got her powers to everyone, and it explains. Is it? Is it almost the same way like how she got her powers in the comics? In the com- not, I think it's different. I don't really know. In the comics, character. it wasn't because of Wanda. In one division, it's because of Wanda, which explains her. So she kind of like red Wanda. Yeah. Because very well explained yeah also uh, like what i said a while ago and like what you guys said uh, even though we kind of expected the revelations already for example monica's photo like monica becomes photon and with agnes as agatha yeah agatha harkness the way they did it i just can't stop talking about it but the way they did it it was so perfect it was seamless. it was seamless yeah and i did expect them really revealed right away what I'm really curious about though is how uh, Agatha got her powers because it, it seems to be like almost the same as you know, Wanda, but yeah, how how is it purple and like 
how how did you get there? Yeah, we still have a lot of questions. Obviously, we have a lot of questions and it hopefully a whole lot of episodes Dr. to cover. Shin, you know, magic. Or maybe she can be like an established witch already or something. That's why she's already like that powerful, you know. Or Mephisto or Nightmare. We don't know. There's a whole lot to cover. Yeah. And where are the kids? Where, where are the twins? Because in the comics, in House of M, Mephisto wanted the kids because they're like kind of part of his soul. Oh, yeah, I read about that. Yeah. So I hope they, they write it into the story. Yeah. And they kind of said that one division is going to be reverse House of M. So expect that the stories will be somehow altered in the MCU. So instead of removing the mutants, he'll be creating mutants. So yeah. Just, well, I mean, um, the MCU, even though it's not completely faithful to the comics, yeah. um, I still love how they were able to create their story that even though it's not completely faithful, they still kept in some details, more or less. I'm just kind of disappointed, I guess, in a way that um, this episode kind of confirms that uh, Evan Peters is, you know, Quicksilver. He may not actually be, you know, from the X-Men. No, movies. no, 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 Nigel, no. I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping it's not, but it, it, it's, it's, it's like they're leaning towards it. Or it can be possible that Agnes or Agatha Harkness, we can call her by that now, Agatha Harkness was the one who got him from the X-Men universe. Have you seen the ending though? The post credit scene or the yeah. one with the, yeah. the, the like picnic setup? Which uh, the post credit Post credit scene. scene. No, I think he's still like, when he's in the hex, he's still like brainwashed or something. What if Vision does his thing to him? He's going to be like the normal X-Men Quicksilver we know. Thing to look forward to every week. Yeah, true. I hope it's one hour. One what hour. Vision is live. Wait, if it's 30 minutes though, expect the oh. finale to be two hours. Because the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. finale was two hours. So yeah, expect the same thing. It's a fitting time for a finale. Yeah. It's like a movie. It's like a movie already, right? What do you expect from Secret Invasion, though? So, yeah. I'm not complaining much about the runtime, as long as, you know, uh, the story ends. It's about the writing and the plot and everything, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I admire with Marvel. When they execute things, they execute things really greatly, you know? Like what Abe said, they may not be 100% comic accurate, or faithful to the comics, the story, the writing, how the plots progress, the story arcs and everything. It's amazing. That's completely amazing. And- oh, and speaking of amazing, um, I just can't help but mention or notice in every episode, uh, the commercials, yeah. the commercials of every episode, I just can't help but yeah. notice them and how they tie in well with the episode. Every single episode. Actually, with the commercials, there's been this theory going on for like months now that, well, how many months? Two months probably. Almost. Almost two months, right? Yeah. Almost two months. Almost two months that uh, these two people are actually Wanda's parents. And some believe that these are just foster or adoptive parents. What do you guys think? Um, I heard from Reddit that you know, it's, it's, it's a popular theory. It's yeah. also um, another theory that is um, it's reflecting her traumas. Yeah, it's also reflecting her traumas. Or There's also this theory that goes it's actually reflecting the Infinity Stones as well. I'm not sure. I think that's probably likely, yes. but I don't really like... I, 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 don't, I don't think it's like the most likely but it's yeah I'm not complaining if that's the case though. same I think I don't side with the theory that it's related to the infinity stones I side with the theory that those are somehow her parents or it re- that's possible like yeah. her traumas yeah since she controls most of most of what happens in the show yeah. well aside from like the, Agatha or, or, or what if it's her parents and her trauma yeah like both 
Maybe both. Why not, right? But maybe maybe they don't like ever acknowledge it. Like they just they just let us like, keep it. making theories about it. Yeah. Or what do you never think? Really like, do you think those are her like real parents or adoptive parents? I think adoptive. I'm going for the adoptive or foster. I'm going for adoptive as well, considering Sorry. that watching some of the animated series, read some of the comics that Magneto is actually their father. True. I, I am I'm your father. I'm hoping they leave the door open. I'm leaning towards it here. I'm hoping they leave the door open for that. I'm hoping they keep it big. Like, they might. Actually, yeah. yeah. Before we delve into her like real parent or father, let's move on to the next theory that makes sense. The Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Return. Okay, you guys haven't watched the series, but actually, unfortunately, unfortunately, which is a sign that you should. And to the listeners who haven't watched Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. yet, this is the sign that you should. If you're waiting for it, you should. It's available on Netflix, on Disney+, Plus, and all other platforms. I'm telling you guys right now, you should watch it. I'll be watching it as soon as this podcast ends. Yeah. So yeah, you guys need to watch it, especially if you want to catch up or yeah, if you, or you have free time. I suggest you guys watch it. Spoiler alert: Coulson is alive. <laughs> Basically, this is part of the segment theories that make sense. Many eagle-eyed fans actually noticed that the hula girl figurine in the van that Darcy drove is actually the same figurine as the one that Daisy has in her own van and also in the Zephyr. So yeah, that's one of the major Easter eggs that they dropped. Also, the soap. The Hydra soap is also a major Easter egg that relates one division to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And I just want to tell you guys that the story arc or like the format of one division is similar to the one that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. did back in season four the framework arc so yeah there's so many agents of field parallels as well and i don't know maybe it's just a coincidence or maybe it means something maybe they're setting up the return of the agents of shield because why would they do it in the first place i mean with what they have been doing recently i won't be surprised yeah though i even though if i'm not surprised i would still be amazed if they were able to pull this off yeah. seamlessly like how they did with the entire MCU for the past decade. Yeah, Marvel really loves doing references or Easter eggs or teasing, right? And why would they release, why would people, why would Scoopers actually talk about Daisy Johnson and Phil Coulson going back for Secret Invasion? Like Chloe Bennett and Clark Gregg. Why would they talk about it on the exact same day that one division, one division episode seven gets released. It has to mean something. So yeah, moving on to the dark hold, which is another Agents of Shield and Runaways Easter egg. You guys, really have to watch the series. Yeah, especially Runaways too. It's such a great show. You're missing out. You're sleeping on these hidden gems of Marvel. Actually, fun fact. Another fun fact is that I wrote an essay about Agents of Shield back in my advanced English class. So yeah. How, how, how long was that? Like five years ago, maybe? No, this 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 year. Like this quarter. Oh, it's this year? Yeah, for college. My like, goodness. Yeah, for advanced English. Anyways, moving on to the dark hold. Have you, Nigel, Abe, have you noticed the book in the basement of Agatha Harkness? Well, with the flashing book. Yeah. With its lights and the setting of the camera. Yeah. I guess it's kind of obvious. Because, you know, in Runaways, they actually tackled the dark dimension and everything related to realities and stuff. And the dark hold was heavily involved. Also in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. with the Ghost Rider arc, they actually used the dark hold too. So eagle-eyed fans are actually, they actually believe that it signals the return of the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. knowing that they are are experienced in this kind of things, you know? So yeah, I believe that they're returning as well. Especially Ghost Rider, please, Marvel, Gabriel Luna, Robbie Ray's Ghost Rider. I need that. Yeah. 
fun fact also, the look of the dark hole though, it's kind of different. But people think that. So moving on to the other theory that makes sense, we have Tyler Hayward's identity. So are you you're aware of Tyler Hayward, right? Yeah, the director. Yeah. 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 Actually, my theory is that he's a scroll and he's a double agent. He's probably the bad scroll. And there's you know, a secret invasion. You know, um, an interesting theory that you know it's probably not true, but it's I I hope it, yeah. it's true. Um it's on some Reddit again. I see yeah, it. Sure. <laughs> um there's a theory that um, in the in the animated show apparently, um yeah. Uh, one of like the shield agents, I think. I'm not sure. I'm not. I haven't watched it yet. I think um, it's, it was revealed it's, uh, that it was Ultron. So, um, it's possible, like apparently, um, that Hayward is Ultron. Ultron. In, uh, yeah, taking a human form, which is why he wants Vision's body. Because it makes sense that he wants something from Vision, right? He wants. Vision. I feel like James Spader needs to be in at least one more movie. Actually, they well, may- knowing Marvel, they might just bamboozle it again and prove almost all theories wrong again and again yeah, and again. Another twist, probably. Let's move on to the next theory that we have, the aerospace engineer. So, many people have been talking about this too on Twitter and Reddit. Who is this aerospace engineer? Many people believe that it's Reed Richards. Mr. Fantastic, Rhodey, Fitz from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Blue Marvel, I'm not really aware of that character, and Hank McCoy or Beast. Who do you guys bet on? Abe or Nigel? Actually, I am walking in the dark with this one. So, I guess my option for now is to, I guess, wait yeah, for it. Always wait. We're willing to wait for WandaVision, so... I'm willing to wait. Yeah. Actually, um, everything yeah. right now is worth the wait. True. True. Like you know, I feel like I feel like Marvel might be like you know just teasing us, and then it's you know it's not. It it's not disappointing though. It's not gonna be addressed. No, many people were disappointed when they teased that there's like a special announcement during the new year, but we didn't actually get something. So yeah. We got nothing, you know. How about you, Nigel? Who do you think is the aerospace engineer? I'm hoping it's John Krasinski. John Krasinski. <laughs> <laughs> if he like steps in like the frame, people already know that it's fantastic. A fantastic for Mister Fantastic or Reed Richards. Yeah. Like the moment he walks in, like he doesn't even need to state his name. He probably not the most likely. Or, you know, a side character, maybe a small character in the comic. But, you know, I'm still hoping it's not Krasinski. Actually, personally, I'm thinking about Beast from the X-Men. Well, it can be another version of the character or the one from the X-Men. For me, I chose Beast because he's technically an agent of sword in the comics too. So, it makes sense. And he's an engineer, so, yeah. Last but not the least, let's talk about the mystery cameo in the finale. Who do you guys think will this person be? This Mark is like Hamill. Luke Skywalker. For the listeners, Elizabeth Olsen teased that this is like a Luke Skywalker level of cameo. That's why Nigel said Mark Hamill. But the choices are Magneto, any of the spider man Professor X, Deadpool, or Polaris. Polaris is the sister of Scarlet Witch. So who do you guys think? Or if you have characters that aren't on the list or choices, you can state. Honestly, um, I'm just betting on Deadpool right now. Magneto. That mischievous Breaking guy. The fourth wall. Breaking the fourth wall, right? It's a clue. It's a clue that it's Deadpool. Well, I would be I would like to see Magneto as well. Magneto played by Mark Hamill. <laughs> that, that's to, over the top and I like that I'm going to die though if Magneto makes his entrance in Westview they like no but, but there's there's a theory actually that 
um, Mephisto might be played by Mark Hamill. Like, no joke. Wait, isn't he too old, though? No, he... Well, he you know, knowing Mark Hamill, character. yeah. Mephisto could just be, like, CGI. Oh, yeah, CGI, though. Like, their mom was there. There's a B. Okay. Yeah, probably. Those. I mean, he has the voice for it. Oh yeah, our voice. They can voice him. Use a stunt yeah. double or something. He voiced the Joker, so I think he can do Mephisto really well. Well, I want Magneto to show up. Like I, I would... Well, you know, he's also Fire Lord Ozai, so I won't yes. be surprised if he gets another antagonist role. Yeah. Mark Hamill has, you know, that kind of. He exudes that kind of you know, energy. And then energy. It's really up to the Luke Skywalker level, right? If it, he's the one who shows up. I hope it was intentional that, you know, she said Luke Skywalker. Yeah. So I'm really hoping Mark Hamill, you know, Mark Hamill. finally gets to be in the MCU. Cheers to the Star Wars fans out there as well. Yeah. It's a win win. Well, I also want Pedro Pascal, though, to be part of the MCU, by the way. So, yeah. I think that pretty much sums up our episode for today so Abe where can I find you on social media oh you can find me publicly in Instagram you can see me as at AJ Almadro and also um, look into my food blog which will be up and running again which is at you know on foodie okay Nigel where can I find you Um, you can follow me on IG uh, at Nigel James Tapay so make sure to follow them you guys and of course you can follow me on IG at the Coral and Dress on Twitter at FanboyCA and on FB at Coral and Dress CA. This is Zephyr 616. Thank you for listening and see you next week.